This is the Pal Talk News Network. The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users. On demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on Blip TV and on my blog, GaryBombGarten.com, where you're encouraged to post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not, no retribution. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. I welcome you to the show. For those of you who have been trying unsuccessfully and pulling your hair out uh, because you can't get onto the Pal Talk News Network site, we had a catastrophic hardware failure yesterday. And um, our good infrastructure staff here at Pal Talk. And Boaz Franco are working very hard to get that back up for you. Uh, but in the meantime, we're posting a lot of stories that we normally would post there on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com. Now, you ask if you are listening out on uh, CRN Digital Talk Radio or one of our many fine Internet radio affiliates, if you can't get uh, onto the Pal Talk News Network site this week, how do you join the, the program? Very simply, go to www.joinchatnow.com, www.joinchatnow.com. Click on the link. You will be magically transported into our virtual auditorium here on paltalk.com, and there's absolutely no charge for doing so. No Diana Fell's own show tonight. She is under the weather. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. New York time, I will be live from the United Nations, where I will endeavor to get all these um, countries whose delegates won't even acknowledge one another when they pass each other in the hall to hold hands, smoke the peace pipe, and sing Kumbaya. And uh, a reminder this weekend, right here on the Pal Talk News Network, no matter where we stand on the issues, we find that music is the common denominator that brings us all together. And once again, we will be webcasting live Saturday and Sunday, all day long, basically, from noon to 8 p.m. from the world-famous Jersey Shore Jazz and Blues Festival. If you can't get down to the Jersey Shore from where you are, no matter where you are in the United States or around the world, just join us right here on the Pal Talk News Network, and uh, you're going to see and hear the best in jazz and blues Boy, I'll tell you what a rough assignment that is, going to cover that. I hate it. Kidding. It's just the best, isn't it? Well, we have, of course, been covering all this week, every single day, uh, from stop to go, from walk to don't walk, uh, the uh, interdiction by the Israelis of the uh, Gaza humanitarian boat flotilla, uh, an interdiction that re resulted in the deaths of nine people, uh, we, two days ago, spent an entire hour on the street across from the Israeli consulate with the protesters interviewing them. And yesterday we had uh, Joel Lyon from the Israeli consulate here, live in the studio, to give the Israeli point of view on the matter. We've been, I think, doing a better job, frankly, not to break my arm, pat me, myself on the back, uh, than a lot of people in the media trying to bring all the points of view out on this issue and trying to, I don't know, offer a more moderating tone on both sides of this issue. Uh, today we return, I guess, obviously to those who are critical of Israel with our guest. His name is Josh Rubner. He is the National Advocacy Director of the U.S. campaign to end the Israeli occupation. It's a nat national coalition of more than 325 organizations working to change U.S. policy toward Israel and 
uh, the Palestinian territories to support human rights, international law, and equality. He is a former analyst in Middle East Affairs at the Congressional Research Service, and that's uh, for those of you who are uninitiated about that. It's a federal governmental agency that provides a policy analysis to members of Congress. He holds a graduate degree in international affairs from Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, and he appears frequently in the media as a commentator on U.S. policy toward the Middle East. Uh, Josh Rubner, we're delighted to have you with us today on News Talk Online on the Pal Talk News Network. So much for having me. Uh, thank you for, so much for taking some time out from your busy day to join us today. Uh, Josh, I, I mentioned in my introduction uh, that we've been trying to be a bit of a moderating uh, uh, force in this uh, discourse over the issue. What we always find when we talk about the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict, and I think it's really amplified uh, over this incident, that there are those who believe Israel um, was a hundred percent in the right, and that the, um, the that that Israel was set up uh, by at least some of the people on board at least one of the six ships, and for sure uh, Israel is right and the activists are wrong, and then there are those who believe that Israel is one hundred percent wrong on this issue. They had no business boarding those ships uh, in international waters and they murdered um, nine civilians and there is absolutely no culpability on the part of the activists. And one of the things that I have suggested, and, and, and I'd like your take on this, Josh, Josh Rubner, and I, I use this analogy. When there is an automobile accident, sometimes when there is an accident, one side one driver is 100% in, in the wrong and the other driver 100% in the right. If I'm sitting at a stoplight and a drunk barrels into the rear end of my car, he is 100% wrong. But uh, more often than not, there is a degree of culpability uh, for each uh, uh, to be assigned to each driver. What that degree is, what percentage that is, of course, uh, varies from accident to accident, and, and, and I'm just wondering whether you uh, feel comfortable with that analogy that perhaps there may be some culpability uh, on both sides of this uh, very, as the Israelis say, regrettable and what uh, uh, its detractors say is uh, a shameful uh, incident. Well, I would have to agree that in this particular incident, the culpability for it rests 100% with Israel. Israel had no business intercepting a humanitarian civilian ship in international waters, boarding it in a hostile way, and initiating hostilities against unarmed civilians. Do, do you believe that they have, they had a, have a right to interdict um, these uh, ships under some circumstance? 